electroculture. It's supposed to make your plants grow better by harnessing the electricity out of the atmosphere that's already around us. But does it really work? Hmm, well, let's find out. Welcome back to the Weedy Garden. Can you hear that, everybody? That's lightning and thunder. We're living in a big battery. You know what lightning and thunder is? The earth, that's a negative. That's a negative charge. It's the ground, it is the ground, right? And the higher you get up there, the, the, the higher the positive charge. And when the atmosphere presses down on itself and gets close to the ground, that's where we get that spark of electricity of the negative and the positive trying to balance each other out again. The whole planet is going <laughs> with lightning, creating this life of energy and electricity that's running everything. Every single plant and every single animal, they're all run by this electricity. Think about all our little molecules that build up all our little cells. Each of those little molecules are filled with little atoms. And each little atom's got a little positive and a negative running around each other. I'm getting a bit excited, I know. I'll calm down a little bit, but you know why I'm also excited? Because I've just been up north and I visited Mark. You know Mark from the YouTube channel, Self-Sufficient Me? He's the guy that goes, let's get into it. That was better, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Negative and positive always want to meet each other. And there's something about that. And we're full of electricity. All our little atoms in our body is just little bits of energy, little bits of electricity flying around. That much I understand and that much I'm pretty sure of. The other thing I'm pretty sure of is the amount of comments that are asking me to do a video about electroculture is massive. It's electrifying. It's really got me powered up. And I was thinking, I'd like to do an experiment because I'm kind of a bit curious about it. Ooh! I hope I don't get electrocuted doing this video, to be quite honest. But it's simple. All you need is a bit of bamboo or a bit of stick, and it has to be about two meters long. And then you need a bit of copper wire. The one I've got here is 1.25 millimeters thick. And I drove up to him the other day and I said, Mark, I know you're a bit of an experimenter and a bit of a mad scientist. How about we do this together? So we'll set up the experiment exactly the same and then we'll meet in about three months time and we'll be able to compare our results with each other and with everybody out there. And I think if you're a curious person, just like myself and Mark, then you can also do the experiment yourself at the same time, right? Whatever you can find out that's good to grow in this time of year for you, then you could put in the ground with a bit of copper and a bit of bamboo and a stick. So after a little bit of research, I know this, this theory of electroculture goes way back to the 1800s. If you have any idea about how to do electroculture properly or differently than the way I'm just about to show on this video about how we set up our experiment, then write it in the comments, okay? Go over and visit Mark's site as well and see the video that we made together so you can see that we did it exactly the same. I've even got the same punnet of vegetables. I've got eggplant, I've got some bird's eye chili, and I've got some corn. So as Mark would say, let's get into it. So now, the next thing is to put the copper wire on everybody. Yes. And um, from what I understand, it's different if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. So they say it matters which way you turn it. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you want the spiral, as you're looking down from the sky, looking down on the spiral, you want it to go clockwise. Clockwise, if you're living in the Northern Hemisphere. Living in the Southern Hemisphere, then it needs to go anti-clockwise. Okay, so we've done ours anti-clockwise because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. Yep. First, I'll put a bit of compost on it. Then I'll put in a bit of chicken poo and a bit of blood and bone.
and then I put in my plants. You see, Mark and I, we shared some different punnets here. We went and got the, the same little punnets of plants. We got some corn, some eggplant, and some bird's eye chilli. I took half and he took half, and so I'm going to plant half of mine in one bed and half of the other in the other bed, and I'm going to electrify one of the beds, and we'll see how we go. And if you want to do the same experiment, I welcome you to do that, and I encourage you to do that so we can get this like out in the open once and for all. Like, does it work or does it not? I think I might come back tomorrow morning, it's getting a little bit dark now. And I'll just water these in. And I'll give them a bit of mulch. And of course, a little bit of water. And I'll make sure I keep the water up because they're, they're young and vulnerable. They just come out from the nursery. And then I'll press them in the garden bed and put them down about 30 centimetres into the soil, around the garden bed, about one metre apart. All right. And we'll come back and we'll look at that in uh, about three months' time. So I put the same amount of compost on this bed as I did on the other bed. My own homemade compost, 21 day compost from that video up there. It's a very popular video actually, my most popular video, over a million views. My garden bed is a little bit different from, from Mark's. Mark has got the birdie garden beds, but I kind of like to prefer to make my own out of old water tanks whatever I can find laying around. There's the chicken poo. And a bit of blood and bone. I mean, I don't need to do this extra blood and bone and the extra chicken poo because I've got chicken poo in the compost and I've got dead cane toads and, and rats and stuff like that in my compost. It's not gonna hurt to have a little bit more. Okay, now it's time for the plants. I'm gonna chop one off each of them and they're all looking pretty healthy, so it doesn't matter. Always take the weakest one, of course, but they're all looking pretty good. Just take off one, two. I take them off because I don't want to I don't want to disturb the roots. It's a bird's eye. Alrighty, now I've got what I need. See the reason I cut them off is because when there's two growing out of one pod, you've got two seeds that are just competing against each other to try and get up out of the ground and, 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 and grow. So by chopping, by chopping one of them off, you're also not disturbing the roots of the existing one. Instead of pulling them apart, that's what I'd do. Eggplants, beautiful soft soil. Bit of pyrethrum on these leaves. Pyrethrum is just a flower and I've got it growing down in the garden. But it stops the little black bugs from killing my eggplants. And last but not least, our little bird's eye chili. Okay, like that. So that's how Mark and I did our electroculture experiment. Uh, if you do have any sort of experience with electroculture and you feel that you've got um, other ideas of how to set it up, please write it in the comments because this little series is all about getting to the bottom of this, right? We do have rats in the garden, and what I'm a little bit afraid of is the rats are gonna come and, uh, and eat my corn, my nice little corn. So what I'm gonna do is spray this chili spray on it, and that is just my Carolina Reaper, a whole bucket full of them. I squashed them up, soaked them in water for a couple of months, and then I strained it all. So this is pretty strong chili spray. The capsaicin in the chili, is the thing that is the hot part. It's only mammals that gets affected by that. So it does deter the, the rats and the mice. Well, this will be interesting to see what happens. If you want to go over to Mark's channel, Self Sufficient Me, and you can see how we set his garden up at the same time. If you also do this experiment with us, then send your photos to my email. You'll find that on theweedygarden.com before 14th of February next year. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later. If you're still watching, we're giving away a complete food forest garden makeover for Christmas on theweedygarden.com. So, be in it to win it. <laughs>